hello hello this is megan welcome back to my channel to all of my returning subscribers however if this is your first time joining me on today welcome make sure you subscribe to become a part of the family and know that it is here that we use information from celestial bodies to help us gain a better understanding of our favorite celebrities world events but most importantly our damn selves so with that in mind I want to do a second video on a very, very important topic. So recently, I uh, published a video titled How to Overcome Capricorn Blues, all right? And so after listening to it, my Virgo moon, the inner perfectionist within me, uh, saw some missed opportunities to make certain points. So I kind of want to go back and flesh it out. So consider this to be a catch-all video, basically describing the correlation between depression and the sign of Capricorn. And I thought it was very fitting because we are in Capricorn season. Obviously, depression is something that is widespread and definitely felt year-round. But, you know, this could even be the peak season of depression, if you will. All right, there is a thing called seasonal depression that a lot of people tend to deal with that absolutely is derivative of that Capricornian energy. So I wanted to take advantage of it while it was with us and while a lot of you guys are experiencing some of its effects. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. And then towards the end of the video, I'll give some tips and recommendations on ways to combat the capricorn blues so to speak now i do want to preface this video also by saying i am not a doctor okay i am not a psychologist psychiatrist i'm not a uh, counselor at that so with that in mind definitely make sure you seek out professional help if you feel like you or someone you know and love may be suffering from some form of mental illness, right? I cannot diagnose someone. I cannot definitively come up with treatment. Those are things I strongly encourage people to go seek on their own. And there's lots of resources available for that, okay? Astrology, uh, even, you know, occultism, divination. None of these things are a adequate substitution for actual help or seeking actual help from licensed physicians it's always good to have a bunch of different tools in your artillery right different things that you use in combination that work together but i would never suggest a person who is seriously suffering from clinical depression or any other illness or ailment rely strictly on my advice and expertise to carry them through to the other side because your ass might not make it okay i'm gonna keep it a bean all right just, <laughs> i'm just doing my job over here you gotta work with me now so let's go ahead and get started now once again capricorn for a long time has been hailed as the sign of depression and this is due to its rulership or ruling planet of saturn saturn is definitely one of the more dense planets in astrology. In fact, for a very long time, astronomers and astrologers alike did not even know that the other outer planets, which would be Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, even existed. Meaning Saturn was really as dense as you can get. It was the ultimate outer planet, and it represented all things that honestly a lot of people could even associate with pluto which would be like death decay saturn also deals with age it deals with somberness and when you think about the months of the year that are ruled by saturn it's no wonder that it carries this really dense and heavy um even depressing might i say energy to it now taking it back to the pagan times where they oftentimes celebrated the harvest. And that's where the origin of Christmas even came from, right? In December, y'all go check out my astrology behind Christmas video right after this. So finish watching this video though. However, comma, this time of year was definitely marked by lots of deaths. You know, 
crops were not able to flourish and grow in such cold, dry, harsh conditions. There was a lot of uncertainty, right? People had to make hard choices. There was lots of death and decay in the air. There was a lot of sadness in the air. So naturally, Saturn is going to encompass a lot of this energy, a lot of these qualities and elements to it, okay? Saturn as a planet can deal with the crushing weight of reality. It could deal with responsibility. And so when we start talking about depression and suffering from the Capricorn blues, so to speak, or even the Saturn blues, so to speak, a lot of times people could feel the effects of a lot of these energies in their day-to-day lives. In fact, the months of the year that are ruled by Saturn have often been associated or strongly correlated with people experiencing peak levels of seasonal depression. So there are a plethora of reasons why it makes a lot of sense to link the sign Capricorn to depression. Some of the other correlations could include, but are not limited to, loneliness. Capricorn, in its essence, deals with the concept of being alone. So does Saturn. And when you think about depression, one of the main things that people do is isolate themselves. I've also heard it discussed pretty often that depression is essentially a hyper focus on the past or a hyper fixation on the past and Capricorn as the Saturn also represents the past now I thought this was also kind of interesting because Aquarius which is the other Saturn ruled month of the year happens to represent the future and that's because of the Uranus co-ruler But anytime people focus too much on one or the other, yes, that can absolutely leave you in a state of depression or suffering from a nasty case of the Capricorn blues. Capricorn likes to see things for how they are and not how they could be, which is also something that correlates or links very strongly with depression. A lot of times people get caught up in you know, the reality of things. And the truth of it is, yes, reality isn't always bad, but it's not always good. So sometimes people can find themselves too caught up in, uh, you know, just the negative parts of life, especially when these are people who've had hard lives, which is also very Saturn. Uh, And this is why you have a lot of people with very prominent Saturn placements, Saturn dominance, people with lots of Capricorn placements or Capricorn energy, who could just naturally feel this, um, you know, on a day-to-day basis. Of course, if you're someone who struggled a lot or who's lived a really hard life, yeah, it's very easy for these people to be naturally pessimistic or naturally very skeptical of certain things. An example of this would be a person who has their moon squaring Saturn. This is a prime aspect that could deal with depression. And as a result, There is a natural hesitancy to forming intimate relationships or there may have been a lack of that very early on, a lack of nurturing. Um, So when they're shown, you know, nurturing behavior uh, or somebody presents, you know, a, a loving and caring relationship, these are people who could be very skeptical of others, put it like that. Very skeptical of others, very hesitant to really let other people in. It can be really easy to see the worst in someone or situations. And people on the outside looking in could easily call them a Debbie Downer, once again, a pessimist, so on and so forth. These are the people who would see the proverbial glass as half empty. And this is because when depressed or if suffering from depression, it's really hard to see the brighter sides of life so all these things definitely could you know play into one another when talking about depression and astrology once again capricorn and saturn deal with challenges and hardship uh which could also bring about 
depression. Think about when you experience some of the most difficult parts of life, right? When people encounter things or are tested in life, um, really big events, monumental events in life could oftentimes trigger depression. Capricorn also deals with punishment. And it's almost like a karmic type of punishment. And think about when bad things happen to people. And even the way that we buy into the idea of, um, you know, negative events happening. A lot of times people feel like it's punishment for things that we've done to other people before. Even the saying of, well, huh, karma's a bitch or life's a bitch. When things happen to people, there's this kind of underlying implication of, okay, well, maybe that person deserved that. Or when bad things happen to people, one of the most common questions to ask is, what did I do to deserve this? So this feeling of being punished by a higher power is very Capricorn in nature, is very Saturn-based in nature, and as a result, can also very um, intricately tie into the themes of depression in terms of how depression is experienced. Depression can feel like a punishment from God, but it could also be the byproduct of going through experiences to where one feels like they are being punished as well. It could even be a byproduct of one being hard on themselves, which is also very Capricorn in nature. Capricorn also deals with failures and the lack of recognition and or respect for accomplishments or achievements. These are also things that just naturally can drive depression in a person's life. Capricorn and Saturn also deals with work, which could also but don't necessarily have to tie into the theme of like accomplishments and achievements and recognition. But a lot of times, you know, especially Capricorn placements or people with heavy Saturn energy look to work to kind of help them with those things or use their careers as a catalyst to help them you know obtain certain levels of achievement and recognition and so on and so forth you know it's really easy for these people to fall into depression when they're not able to meet certain goals let's say you didn't get that special promotion but even just in a regular everyday sense right you said you wanted to do a and b but you fell short now you're depressed. That's very Capricorn, very Saturn based. Not feeling like you measure up, especially when we start talking about um, one's place in the world. Capricorn is a very worldly sign. In its essence, Capricorn and Saturn both deal with struggle. And these are also themes that could absolutely correlate with depression. Now, to speak on some recommendations as far as things that could help people who are experiencing these feelings, I would say definitely uh, taking a lot of that focus that one would place on material things, worldly things, and turning that elsewhere, primarily towards the spiritual, is very important. Also, spending more time with family and really uh, nourishing a lot of one's connections, your personal relationships, which is why Capricorn is the opposing sign to cancer. One of the worst things you can do is isolate yourself. And as stated before, that could be a tendency or just a natural urge that comes about when you are feeling depressed, when you don't really want to do anything. Uh, Capricorn and Saturn deals with ambition, one's desire to, you know, do things or get something done, tackle something in the long run, a sense of destiny. All of those things are lost when someone is depressed. So really taking the little energy that you do have and pouring it into whether it be family, if you have it, or once again, people who are close to you, leaning on that close support system is going to be very important which brings me to my next point instead of focusing on the future focus on the now instead of focusing on the past focus on the now easier said than done but some good ways to do this would be like meditation 
practicing mindfulness. Also, my mentor, shout out to Rabina, the realist astrologer, recommended that I get familiar with the philosophy of Stoicism. And Stoicism is basically just a, a ancient philosophy that promotes a person exercise the dichotomy of control. And this is basically just uh, recognizing the things that you do have control over, which is also very Capricorn, right? Being control or controlling, wanting to be in control of certain things um, and figuring out what you don't have control of and relinquishing that need for control for the things that you do not have control over. Acceptance, radical acceptance for the things that we don't have control over. And that's where it kind of circles us back to the darker parts of life, like death. We're all going to die illness and decay we're all gonna get sick there are things that are gonna happen in life that are inevitable right accept that and let's work on the things that we can do that we can focus on in the here and now learning how to detach yourself from certain outcomes that would be the more positive side of capricorn also adopting effective self-soothing techniques Right. Once again, hopping back over into that cancer polarity. And of course, I said healthy because you don't want to, you know, start creating other issues such as someone who maybe eats when they're depressed. And that's another reason why you see that strong correlation. You know, when a person is going through depression, there is such a drastic change to their eating habits and regimen. You know, that cancer Capricorn polarity. Some people eat a lot which is very very cancer some people can't eat at all but coming up with other you know healthy self-soothing uh techniques is going to be important because it's it's what we've learned as children as babies some of us you know have them more than others or have more pronounced self-soothing techniques some of us need to learn healthier ones but you know that's something that's very important also patience which is another um, you know, more positive byproduct of like that Capricorn energy, learning how to be patient with yourself. So what you're not where you want to be. So what, you know, that you're even feeling like this or that you're going through what you're going through. Um, that's okay. It has no bearings on you as a person. Be patient with yourself. Like that's okay that you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Which kind of brings you back to detaching from the outcome, right? Or, you know, removing yourself from feeling the need to control certain things. Patience could also mean uh, just being calm and remaining detached long enough for things to switch around for you. Because nothing ever goes one way 100% of the time. Which is where we hop back into that cancer polarity between uh, you know, that opposition from Cancer to Capricorn. Cancer is very moody. It fluctuates a lot, right? It happens in waves. And so very similar to depression and other, you know, ailments like that. It is the matter of sitting it out, right? Waiting it out until the worst is over. Uh, and that's something that I personally benefit from in terms of reminding myself, like, Okay, you're feeling this right now, but guess what? It won't last forever. Yes, you are depressed right now. But guess what? Detach long enough and root yourself, ground yourself long enough to experience the shift. Things are going to have to shift in the other direction at some point. Capricorn deals with tests. Saturn also deals with tests. So you can even look at your depressive period if you're going through a depressive episode as a moment in time where you are being tested. It is cosmic law that things will get better and things are going to get worse. Good things don't last forever, but bad things don't last forever either. Even when you think about the idea of karma, all of these are cosmic laws and Capricorn and Saturn definitely deal with the law, right? Um, They're the great enforcers, which is another reason why karma is so intrinsically tied to uh, the planet of Saturn. But nonetheless, you know, really respecting 
which is also very Capricorn, respecting these laws and keeping them in mind makes it easier while you're going through what you're going through. And it can make uh, the suffering, which is also very Capricorn, um, a bit less or at least sting a bit less. But then also doing the work which is once again, very much correlated with that Capricorn energy. And doing the work could look like doing your shadow work. It could look like, you know, really diving into things from your childhood, doing your trauma work. And all of these things are absolutely easier said than done. And is another reason why I recommend that you take your ass to therapy and go get some professional help if you are someone who resonates with anything that I'm describing in this video, okay? And then mastering one's emotions which is also encapsulated in that uh, opposite polarity of cancer, right? Mastering your emotions, which is absolutely something else that's easier said than done in a lifelong challenge, uh, is something else that can make depression easier. Because when you think about it, like, I don't know if depression is deemed to be an emotion, but it can feel like it. So it's another thing that makes that cancer Capricorn polarity make a lot of sense. Um, but understanding your emotions, how you feel in every stage of emotion, you know, what are some things that you naturally do, you know, your habits, um, those are some good things to learn, like your natural programming, your default programming, understanding yourself makes it easier to endure. So yeah, this concludes my video on the Capricorn Blues. Y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know if you found any of this to be useful. And, uh... You know, drop down any other tips you may have that could help someone else who's dealing with the same thing in the comment section. So I will holler at y'all in the next video. Love you. Bye.